Have you ever cut your lawn from your favorite recliner or lawn chair? Or maybe while you're at your favorite ball game or even out to dinner? Well, if you haven't, you may want to check out the Navimo from Segway. This is the Navimo model number I-105 and it's a robotic lawnmower. Yes, this will mow your lawn. It's battery powered, so all self-contained. Even got a charging dock that it will automatically find and go back to to charge. It will cut up to about an eighth of an acre and you can schedule it to do so. Now, full disclosure, they reached out to us and asked if they sent us a mower, would we be willing to make a video and share it with all of our audience and we said absolutely so this is a sponsored video they did provide the mower in fact we've had this for several weeks and using it before it's even being released so we didn't just use this once make the video and roll on we've literally had it running uh, for weeks on a scheduled uh, timer so it actually goes out and mows all the time but before we get into all that Let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into the features of this, see how we set it up, we'll show using it, and specifically diving in some of the technology that it has, such as the vision fence, where you don't have to map out every single obstacle. It will actually see that on its own and go around it, and also the exact fusion locating system. This is how you'll get your Navimo i-Series robotic mower, and we have yet to unbox this. We did open the box, but we have yet to pull anything out. Uh, everything seems to be categorized. Looks like you have A, B. I guess this is probably the way you remove this. In fact, there's some instructions right here on the box. Yeah, pull out A and B, then pull out C. Thought these were boxes full of stuff. That actually is a box full of stuff. So then pull that one out. We're gonna pull the mower out. Here's our quick start guide. Navimo Connect. Looks like something with networking. So once you unbox everything, this should be basically the main contents of everything other than the small parts that are in here, uh, which looks like uh, everything to connect the base. Uh, this is basically your charging base and obviously this is your mower. I, I, I'm assuming this has something to do with this part here and maybe goes under there. We'll see that here in one moment. And then in this box, again, yeah, so your cables to run to the charger and plug in. There's your stakes for the ground. Uh, and then basically your GPS antenna, there's the pole. And then the antenna goes on top of that pole. Stakes for the ground, even wrenches. So different types of stakes. Charging adapter, charging block. And then those should be extra blades. Yeah, that's a box of extra blades and screws for those blades. So here we have the Navimo I-105 mower and there's the charging base and we'll get to actually installing all that here in one moment. But I wanted to take an overall look here at the mower underneath the mower, kind of the business side of this. Here we have large rubber lined wheels look much like a tractor tire. And just to give you an idea, the size of these look about nine and a half inches tall, a little taller than nine and a half inches, about nine and three quarter inches tall. Underneath here, we have the blade. So these don't look like your typical mower blade. Uh, they look like a little bitty bush hog type of blade. And in fact, these spin around here on these screws so they're like little razor blades because the idea here is you're not cutting a lot of grass at once. You're cutting just a little bit off the grass all the time. So it doesn't have to do a lot of bush hogging, if you will, or a lot of heavy cutting. And so that's the idea of really small light blades. Also, that's the same idea of if it hits something uh, and, you know, that sensitive material, it's not going to hurt it because these things are just going to fold away as they hit. So 
as this spins up, they'll swing out here like this to cut the grass. And if it does hit something, it's just going to give way and spin on that axis. Up top, we have rotating caster. So the wheels actually rotate and obviously the caster spin around as well. So they're just going to kind of be following behind uh, the driving wheels and then rotate whenever it needs to rotate. And these wheels look like about three inches. So yeah, these are three inch casters. And I believe this might be the back of the unit. This may be the front, but maybe it's not. Maybe this is the front. We'll see when we see the top of it. And overall width of this, just to give you an idea, is about 15, a little over 15 inches wide for the wheelbase. And then as far as full length, if you can see the top there, a little over 21 inches, so about 21 and a quarter inches long. And then height of this, Right at a foot, about 11 and a half inches tall. I believe this is the front because this is the charging port right here. And this is what they call the vision fence. So we can map out the coordinates and we can miss trees and things like that. But what this vision fence is going to do is it will detect those things that maybe a ball in the yard, maybe a pet in the yard, a bicycle that's been left out there. It will detect that back up, move away, back up, move away and avoid those obstacles with the vision fit. So that's kind of your seeing eye, if you will, even though you've predetermined maybe a course, uh, still this is your safety override, if you will, and it's going to avoid obstacles in its path. And here on the top of the unit, we have a big stop button. So if you're out in the yard, you just want to stop it and you can do it from your app or you can walk over, hit that button and stop the unit. Here's our control panel here. So digital control panel, um, we'll do everything with, with programming either from an app or, and, or through this as well. And this is the height of your cut. So you can actually dial in the height from three and a half inches or 3.6 inches all the way down to two inches. So just turn this dial and that's actually raising and lowering that blade system we already seen. So we can see here, as I turn this, that actually moves. Now, if you get the Navimo Connect, you want to either flip this upside down or stand it up like this, and you'll have this cover on there and you'll remove the Allen head screws, four of them, and then you've got a little network cable right here. That's going to plug right into the back of this. Pretty self-explanatory. In fact, you may want to slide that in first and then plug that in and that slides into place like that. Put your cover on and you're good to go. We'll go ahead and get all this ready before we take it outside. As we mentioned, this is our charging pad. And so this little cover is just going to slide on there and pop into place. These are our two connectors that are simply going to connect to these wires here. So there's the female, here's the male and you really can't mess this up or it's hard to mess it up anyway same here male to female and one's like a five pin and one's a two pin so again you're not going to mix those up and on the other end one of them is going to connect to the charging block which is the two pin which makes total sense because really not much communication there just a positive and negative negative. and you're going to plug that into a wall and then this one is going to connect to the GPS antenna. And that'll go on top of the pole. Pretty self-explanatory here. That slides together. This end with the threads will actually thread onto the base. So you'll stick this in the ground. So we'll do that outside and then screw the pole on. And then this end is just going to slide right in there and you'll put a screw right in that hole. Now that's ready to go in the ground. And included with this, you'll get four of these spikes, which actually screw down into the grass and dirt uh, for your actual charging pad or your home pad. And then you get several of these that you can actually stake these down and hold the, hold the wire down as it goes across the grass or the turf or wherever it's going. And then some Velcro straps here, I'm sure to secure right here to the pole. And by the way, you can mount this away from this unit or mount it right next to it. it. Really doesn't matter. You just need a clear line of sight and at least six feet away from a house or structure. And you also don't want it under a tree. You want to find a nice flat area for your base. 
Then you can run in your landscaping screws. Connect your wires. You get that blinking yellow until we get the GPS hooked up. And now we've got it all staked down and we've got a solid blue light, meaning we've got a good sync to the GPS. We've yet to connect our mower, but just curious. Go ahead and get it charging. We still have to install the app and connect it to the mower. First, you're going to need to install the app, and from there, it's really a simple procedure. Uh, it's going to walk you right through everything uh, from powering on the mower to connecting via Bluetooth, and it should really find the mower automatically, as you see here, when it finds a serial number, and then you're going to select the mower, and then it's going to connect successfully. And again, this is just walking through the app. Um, very simple procedure here, and then you can also connect it to the network. Uh, you can also connect it uh, Wi-Fi as well uh, for updates and that sort of thing. And and then it's going to make you, or uh, say make you, the first time you go through this, you do have to watch this video by its entirety. In fact, the, the button there at the bottom that says, I understand, will not actually highlight until you finish the video. And then you can say, I understand. Then it goes through as far as setting the, the depth of, of cut and uh, talking about pets and, and things in the way. And then when you're done with that, click all set. And now it's going to go through kind of a calibration mode on its own, uh, where it just kind of backs out of the charging port and does a little circle and dance here and then says, okay, I'm ready to start. And of course, our shop dog's got to check it out here and uh, see what it's all about. Now, as far as mapping out the, uh, the, the spots where you're going to mow, again, this is very simple, especially if you've ever driven a radio-controlled car. It's like that. Literally, your, your smartphone, you're going to have a, a left button that's going to operate the forward and back, and the right button is going to operate the, uh, the turning left and right. And again, it's going to make you watch this here. And then you can, basically, you're going to take it to its starting point. Now, if you're starting it right there at the base, then you can start it right there. Otherwise, you can literally drive it to the spot where you want to start, which may be across the driveway or somewhere somewhere else, and then you'll say you've reached its starting point, and now it's going to start mapping. Now, you're going to want to border your entire uh, property or whatever you're going to be mowing and have the border on the right side of the mower and so uh, and go around the property that way, and that's kind of how it's... it's doing the uh, internal mapping, if you will. And then once you reach the starting point, you're going to click done. And then it's basically going to map out that property or map out that area. And you can say save map. Now you can see here, uh, you can also say add more, but I'm going to go ahead and save this map as it is. And then I can come back and basically say continue mapping. And it's going to give me some options here where I can add an off-limit island, a boundary, or a vision fence. Uh, and so basically I'm going to add an off-limit island here. So I've got a space where I don't need it to mow, where it's something that's going to stay static, that's never going to move, such as a small shed. And now it's asking me to, to go to the starting point for that off-limit island. And just like when you're mapping out the boundary of the property, uh, the same way with the off-limit island, you want to keep uh, the actual object on the right side of the mower as you map that out. So once you reach that starting point, now you can see that I'm basically boxing this out, doing all right-hand turns because it is a, a square or a rectangle, and keeping that on the right side of the mower. And now I'm just going to click Done, and it's going to save that off-limit island right there on the map and then save map once again. And just like before, it's gonna give me the option to continue mapping, which I am. We're going to go ahead and add another off-limit island. And obviously I say, got it, I've already seen this. And so we're gonna go over to the next area and map out that other off-limit island and keeping that boundary on the right, just as before and start boxing this out or drawing that off-limit island. And once I do that, click Done, and now you can see 
both those saved there. And I'm going to go ahead and save the map. And now we've got two off-limit islands. And now I can click continue mapping or I can say done. And I'm going to be done and tell it to go home. So I just click the go home button and you see it's traveling across the property and returning home. Speeding up the film a little bit here to uh, make this a little faster. But you can see it on my app as well as real time right here as it returns to the charger. And from the app, we have a couple of options. I can just tell it to mow now, uh, but I can also go into the app and actually set a schedule for this to mow on different days. So you can see here, I go to the day of the week I want, and then I can add the schedule by selecting the time to start, the time to end, and each of those days at those specific times, it will actually mow, get done when it can, and then return to the charging base. Now there are a couple of really cool features about this. Number one, this has no problem running at night. You can see the glowing lights on it, and then also it will actually turn on a little headlight. Uh, and you can actually see this roaming around and mowing, and then daytime is no issue, obviously. Another cool thing, if you noticed before, the mower was going to side to side. Now it's going at a diagonal, and the next time it mows, it will go in a kind of a straight ahead pattern. So it'll do three different patterns. Each time it mows, it will change that. So if you have some nice turf grass, such as St. Augustine, uh, something like that, it's not going to just lay it over in one in one way and, uh, you know, it kind of gets where it, it lays over it a certain way and, and doesn't stand up nice and tall. It's going to mow it at different angles, making sure that that grass uh, stays nice and upright. And when it's completed with its task or with its schedule, it will return home. So uh, whether it hits 100% of what it's mowing, it will return home after that. Or if it's just done with the schedule, like it's supposed to mow for an hour and a half, it will return home after that. Or once the battery gets down to a certain point, it will also return home to the charger after that as well. So it's not going to stay out there and just kill the battery completely before it returns to base. Uh, so it does have awareness of the battery charge and it will stop mowing, return to base, and then pick it back up at its next scheduled time. Now, we tried this on three different grasses that we have here, and it did just fine on all of them. In fact, it did very well on all of them. They do recommend that you mow this before uh, you set this mower out to, to mow, because this is not meant to be a mower that cuts off you know, three or four inches of grass. It's meant to just maintain the cut. However, in uh, most of this grass, we never cut it first and we let it do the cut uh, on its first voyage. And you'll see here, we just threw a ball out here in front of it. This is where the vision fence is going to kick in. It's going to come up close to it, back up. And I think it may bump it here in just one second. Yeah, it just bumped it just a touch. Uh, but it's awareness of it. And now after we push it out of the way, it's now not seeing it and just goes right over the top of where it was before. Uh, and then... Uh, over here, there's a, you can't really tell, but right about where it is about now, there's a kind of a big undulation, kind of a hole there. Um, and it traverses that quite well with, without an issue. Um, and as far as, you know, do, going over slight grades, it does a great job at that. Tractions very well. If it's too big of a hole, it might have a small issue of, of getting in and out of it, but that wouldn't be any different than really any regular old mower. Uh, but as far as maintaining the cut, it just does a really neat job because you just never notice that the lawn is getting long. It just always stays cut. So for that uh, simple maintenance uh, of a lawn, this does very well. Now, if you're looking for this to, to mow down huge weeds and uh, you know, long turf, it's not the mower for you. Also, you know, you want to stay in that kind of eight acre scenario as well, not getting uh, too large of an area. This is, again, that place where we're talking about there's kind of a, a hole there, a dip, and it's coming in and out, out of that without an issue. This is the actual sound that you will hear uh, when it's going along. I'll, I'll be quiet here for a second. That's all you'll hear. And here's a little bit more close up and just kind of the uh, the true sound of the clipping. So very quiet mower. This is uh, it's seeing the tripod and, and going away from this as well. It just recognized the ball. So that vision fence just does a really good job at detecting when something that's uh, larger than say a leaf or something is in the way, backing up, turning around and getting back on course. 
And this is just an example here. We're catching this right before it goes on schedule. And you see it gives a little ding and then backs out and starts going. So uh, just kind of catching it as it automatically started its scheduled event and uh, backs out of the charging port, uh, does a little dance here, and then uh, gets on its way. And you'll hear the blades fire up in just one moment. There they go. And you see the ring kind of flashes and letting you know that the uh, it's under mowing now. And off it goes. It's been running for weeks now through rain, through night, uh, through snow. No, no snow. We're here in Florida. No snow here, but plenty of rain without a hiccup. We haven't touched it in literally weeks. You know, when we first got it, we played around with the mapping and things like that, adding different boundaries and connection points and adding to the mowing schedule, things like that. But for the past few weeks, we've literally just let it run and it goes out and schedules and mows and has just kept everything nice and trim. We even mounted the GoPro on top of it to just get a little footage of uh, what it actually sees. Now let's take a closer look at kind of after we've used this for several weeks. And as you can see under here, the blades, they really don't look beat up. They look a little dark. They're no longer nice and shiny and silver, uh, but they're still intact and there's really not a lot of marks on it because it's not doing a lot of heavy cutting. And when it does hit something, as we mentioned before, it just kind of swings out of the way. So underneath there's a lot of dust and grass and even some weeds that we actually pulled out of the wheels, but it didn't stop it. It didn't stop it at all. Uh, just a little residual junk up under the deck there uh, after it's been running for several weeks. I, I think I would recommend maybe every uh, few weeks or so, maybe blow it out, something like that, even though we did not. But as far as charging, as far as it handling uh, obstacles in the way between dogs and pets and balls and bikes and everything else here, had no problem at all and has run flawlessly. Now pricing on this is going to be less than $2,000 and you can find it on the Navimo website as well as on Amazon. So your choice of where you want to purchase this. We will have a link in the description if you care to use that. Also keep track of us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok. And if you don't mind, would you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't done so already? And by all means, if you hated our video, as always, give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.